And now, I'm here to introduce Tim Siebels, is Dana Heller, a Human Scholar and Chair of the English Department here in the world. So please welcome Dana Heller. Hello, everybody. Uh, okay, here is my dilemma. How do you introduce someone who needs no introduction, <laughs> whose very name is synonymous with versification and authenticity? Uh, to be honest with you, I've been puzzling over this all week, and I uh, compiled all the things I know about Tim with uh, the, you know, the important facts and achievements and quotations. And I began writing a very typical, typical kind of, you know, panegyric of the sort that you hear at festivals when it suddenly dawned on me that really the only way to do this introduction justice would require that I write a poem about Tim. <laughs> So, here it is. Uh, I'm not a poet, so please calibrate your expectations. <laughs> but uh, I really didn't have any choice. The title of the poem is Introducing Tim Siebel. <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed the number of references to consciousness, the poet said. It's not just the language, it's rhythm. Writing as a boy, in Philadelphia, robots from Venus, a teacher mother who read to him, a biochemist father who told him, be your own boss, and who told him, son, this is jazz, check this out, listen to this. And the rest was poetry, electric poetry, Callaloo, the Kenyan Review, Rattle, Verse, and Universe. The poet has no reason to speak in the voice of a doily. A doily does not know pleasure or suffering. Jimi Hendrix, Gil Scott Heron, Langston Hughes, Pablo Neruda, let the impact be what it is. Hurdy Gurdy, Hammerlock, Buffalo Head Solos, Kerosene, 10 miles an hour, and now a fast animal and honors and awards, open voice, national endowment for the arts. Your hands do live in a certain way, the public explained. I have no idea why my hands do what they do. It's certainly not rehearsed or choreographed. The poet thinks that all the arts have to have their way of peeing on the rug, as a friend of his used to say, or demanding a certain kind of attention through rage, or even just pure mystical astonishment. The poet's father reads his books from cover to cover. This is Wes Montgomery. This is Les McCain a progeny who's drawn to certain characters, animate or inanimate, because they allow him to chew on the predicament that concerns him, whose only care is that what has been written comes from an honest place, unbound by any particular kind of etiquette. If people heard more poems, read more poems, they would be far less willing to live without spoken things, a life on the page living in our ears. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to introduce my friend and colleague and the co-director of this year's festival, Tim Siegels. That is the first day of poem for <laughs> First of all, of course, I want to thank all of you for coming. I know it's the Friday before fall break, and I know you have know, really hit the road, so I'm trying to make it work for a while. What I'll do is I'll read um, a few poems from some of the earlier books, but I'll read most of the poems from uh, the newest book, which is that. Okay. It's kind of like a, a Woodstock behind the end. <laughs> I'm a bunch of corner parties in the hallway. I'll start with the poem, it's a, <clears throat> just a meditation. I was talking to Jamal Muhammad last night, some of you were lucky to see this in the afternoon. Uh, and we were just talking about <clears throat> so much trouble in the world, you know, so much you know, war and otherwise all the things. So I'll start with this poem. This is a meditation that starts from an old book. Um, 
but just staring at the moon, thinking, you know, wondering, you know, if there's anybody out there to be back. So that's where it started. Something silver white. Last night, I saw the moon and remembered the earth is also just a rock riding the infinite dark wave of space. That somewhere else, deep down in the Milky Way, someone very different could look up from a garden to see something silver white, candling faintly above a hilltop, and think, that dull star seems so weary near the rest, not knowing that all of us are living on that small taste of light, buying food, calling friends, killing each other, sleeping, and sometimes staring back into the speck of blackness. You know, you can spend your whole life glancing at your watch while everything mysterious does everything mysterious the way gravity keeps everybody close to the ground. It is hard to believe this huge wet stone is always flying through space, and hard to admit there's, there's really nothing to hold on to. While we, battle, while we build houses and fences and thousands of churches, as though this globe were just a fat blossom atop some iron stalk grown from God's belly. After sailing this blue ark so many years together, you might think we would be kinder, because no matter what anybody says about anybody else, we were all born to this planet, suddenly blinking under the same star and the evening sky means the universe is floating. So I try to give, you know, do some things with poetry that people aren't expecting. And um, I know the basketball season is booming, so I'll read another poem that I wrote a while ago. And it's called For Brothers Everywhere. It's from back in the days of when I was playing a lot of school down ball. For Brothers Everywhere. There is a schoolyard that runs from here to the dark fence, where brothers keep going to the hoop, keep rising up with basketballs, ripe as pumpkins, toward rims hung like pinatas, pinned like underclouds to the sky's wide chest. And everybody is spinning, banking off the glass, finger rolling off the glass with the same soft touch you'd give the head of a child. A child with a big ass pumpkin head who, <laughs> who stands in the schoolyard, lit by brothers, posting up, giving, Going, taking the lane, flashing off the pivot, dealing behind the back, between the legs, cocking the rock and gliding like mad hawks, swooping back with arms for wings, palming the sun, throwing it down. And even with the day gone, without even a crumb of light from the city, brothers keep running, gunning, falling away, taking fallaway jays from the corner. Their bodies, like muscular saxophones, body popping, better than jazz, beyond summer, beyond weather, beyond everything that moves. And with one shake, they're pulling up from the perimeter. Shaking, baking, brothers be sweet, pulling up from the edge of the world, hanging like air itself hangs in the air. And gravity, God give them up. The ball burning, fruit with the soul in their velvet hands, while the wrists 
whisper, backspin, and the fingers comb the rock once, giving it up, letting it go, letting it go like good news, because the hoop is a well, a well with no bottom, and they're filling that sucker. Yeah, if you do have a cell phone, <laughs> you might want to put that bad boy on the side of you. Uh, I'll read you this poem. Um, it's a, I, I watched cartoons a lot when I was a kid. And uh, when you look at them when you get older, some of them seem to really be trying to talk about adult issues. Certain kinds of desperation that you might not really feel as a child. And, uh, I used to watch the Roadrunner and Coyote all the time. And it was funny when I was a kid. When I got older and looked at it, it looked really kind of terrifying. You know, um, the Roadrunner never, ever really gets away. He gets away for a little while, but he's always being pursued. And the Coyote is always pursuing, but never getting it. Sounds like some kind of nightmare. <laughs> but when we were a kid, Anyway, this is a this is a poem in the Roadrunner voice. It's called Commercial Break. Roadrunner, uneasy. If I didn't know better, I'd say the sun never moved ever. That somebody just pasted it there and said the hell with it. But that's impossible. After a while, you have to give up those conspiracy theories. I get the big picture. I mean, how big can the picture be? I actually think it's kind of funny. That damn coyote always scheming, always licking his skinny chops. And me, pure speed, the object of all his hunger, the everything he needs. Talk about impossible. Talk about the grass is always greener. I am the other side of the fence. You've got to wonder, at least a little, if this could be a setup. With all the running I do, the desert, the canyons, the hillsides, the desert, all this open road has got to lead somewhere else. I mean, that's what freedom's all about, right? ending up where you want to be. I used to think it was funny. Roadrunner, the coyotes after you. Roadrunner. Now, I'm mainly tired. Not that you'd ever know. I mean, I can still make the horizon in two shapes of the snapstorm. But it never gets easier out here alone with Mr. Big T and his acne supply. Leg muscle vitamins, tiger traps, instant tornado seeds. Come on, I'm no tiger. And who's making all this stuff? I can't help being a little uneasy. I do one of my tricks, a rock scorching razor turn at 600 miles an hour. And he falls off the cliff, the coyote. He really falls. I see the small explosion, his body slamming into dry dirt so far down in the canyon, the river looks like a crayon doodle. That has to hurt, right? Five seconds later, he's just up the highway, hoisting a huge anvil above a little yellow dish of bird seed. Like, I don't see what's going on. <laughs> You know how sometimes, even though you're very serious about the things you do, it seems like, secretly, there's a big joke being played. And you're a part of what someone else is laughing at. Only, you can't prove it. So you keep sweating and believing in your career, as if that makes the difference. As if somehow, playing along isn't really playing along as long as you're not sure what sort of fool you're being turned into. Especially if you're giving it 100%.
So when I see dynamite tucked under the Acme Roadrunner of cupcakes, as long as I don't wonder why my safety isn't coming first in this situation, as long as I don't think me and the coyote are actually working for the same people, as long as I eat and get away, I'm not really stupid, right? I'm just fast. of America, my nappy dorsal splitting the air, the pale victims going down fast like big newtons into a man mad for that gushy feel, that soft cookie flavor. And the pretzels, those laced boomerangs and twisted bread through which a black finger might drift like a thunderhead through the sky's sheer blouse. I have eaten them all except for one, crouched like a felon behind that bag of barbecue chips. But he is mine. I will eat him as surely as Europe ate South America. Just knock on his door tomorrow. No one will answer. And I regret nothing. And I am not sorry. And I don't feel bad about wanting so much of what I like. Some days, I sit all afternoon leering at a box of ginger snaps. Other times, without warning, I am biting big chunks out of something, just like Flojo yums up the meters with a big stride. With my hands and eyes, I am riding teeth first across this life, as if my appetite were the only way out of this lonely skin I'm stuck inside. But it's late. Night nibbles the city, all the avenues cool wantonly like cake. Think about 
about sometimes when I think about when the dragons in hold on, you know, so much violence in the world. And of course, there's still bigotry, sexism, homophobia, and all kinds of madness. But I think about how, how lovely it is that people forget that everybody was just a little tiny kid once. Everybody was a little kid. And so you see all the people who feel like, uh, hell, fuck that dude, fuck that dude, whatever. But if you imagine the fact that within them, with the same set of memories that you had all the way back to childhood, it just changes the way you think about what it means to be alive, you know? And how vulnerable everyone really is. Yeah, we'll go on. This is a, this is a poem called Born. Born. Especially those of you who are parents out there, and some of you well, certainly are. And grandparents here. Born. Is this how it begins? A cry that does not know who's crying. Consciousness filling your head like smoke. The brain, a burning house. First surge of self as a thing apart. Scorched. The shock of touch, smell, and somehow Hunger, the need to have what you cannot have without help. The unintentional world, wayward, aloof. Then maybe relief in someone's arms. Is this where your heart rises, then tilts between hunger and the moment? You are fed, the mind sprung by want, your mouth, the first taste, the forgetting where you are and what's to come. brothers um, had all kinds of advice for me as a kid. He was especially smooth with the ladies. <laughs> His nickname was Tom the Bomb, but for a number of complications, not people. <laughs> so this is called Notes from Tom the Bomb. Don Juan of Germantown High School. 1967-1968. I say, Tom, there's this girl. He says, is she fine like apple wine? Is she fine enough to be a friend of mine? Her name is Tina. So you want to give Tina your winner? <laughs> And Doc's having a party. Is she tuned to your station? Is she believe in what you're faking? <laughs> and she's going to be there. Tell her you know the way to San Jose. Tell her you got a graze in her grass. Tell her you ain't too proud to beg. Yeah, you got to rock Hudson on her. Give her the movie star moon gazer. The look of love say, my duty is your booty. <laughs> Tell her your Peter is sweeter and you know how to treat her. <laughs> yeah, you gotta sing a little bit, little brother. Gots to hit her with a little bit of Sinatra. Everybody loves my body sometimes. <laughs> Oh yes, he said every one of those things. <laughs> this is a, I, I still, this guy was my best friend, his name was Terry Moore. He's still alive, we're still friends. <laughs> when we were young, <clears throat> our moms introduced us. I'm just getting a little background. You'll hear some of this in a And uh, 
you get to the this age and you start to look back about the, at the things that shape you as a young person. This is just a, a poem coming back. I mentioned Woolworths in here, and I know a lot of you are young and not have ever heard of Woolworths. It was a it was a little, it was like, I don't know, five and dime of sorts, kind of a larger five and dime. And you know, it's like you, you could get hamburgers and stuff out of this little stand. What? Terry Moore. Our moms got us together at Woolworths, remember? Cheeseburgers, summertime, 1967. 12 years in the world, mostly we burned for football, to get and move, to shake anybody that wanted to bring us down. Six points was all we needed, and time to find the future where we'd be badass superstars. We thought it was hard being young with adults running things. And it got harder not to think about girls and which words would bring them close to our hands. Mini skirts. Remember checking the cheese in study hall? Marna Evans. We had no idea what those legs could be. If it weren't for movies and the legends of our big brothers, we might never have believed in school visits, long kisses, and maybe even now we'd be dreaming only football. We'd be dreaming only football, the rough touch of leather tightly laced, grabbed and carried to a place where men danced with nothing to explain. The end zone, the promised land. And who could blame us for craving such a simple destination? Then came Johnny, and for me, it was Jane. Short hugs, slow songs, their mouths swimming into our mouths. Among the Philly brothers, the word was swag. Did you swag on them? We'd ask, supposing the wet dream of lips. How many times did y'all swag? So new, the French kiss, the perfect neighborhood for anyone as crazy and blue balled as boys blazing on the verge of the verge of their lives. Man, we spent years on the phone daring each other not to be young, not to be afraid of whatever sex might be. That paperback you found, Nurse Nadine. The way she treated her patients. What exactly was a blue job? And how long would it be till we knew? Our fathers were scary men, younger than we are now, and ready to make themselves clear without saying anything. Especially when we got too cool to listen, too big to hear. Did they believe in sex? The way we were starting to? Was there some secret living softly inside their fists? My, my father loved my mother. It looked so simple year after year. The kiss goodbye after breakfast. The kiss hello about five. Conversation at dinner. TV until time for bed. It's pretty clear. I didn't know much about my parents. Just that they were usually nice people, mostly on my side. And this makes me wonder just how blind I'm going to be. Because these days, I hardly see anything the way I saw things back then. And bro, my eyes are wide open. The NFL will never see us. I can't do half the moves we used to do. Loose leg lean. That cut back stutter, short grass lit beneath our simmering feet. But I'm glad these 40 years have found us still friends, that we played some football and watched each other break slowly into men, which is what we are by now, which was always what we thought we really wanted.
It's important to put a kiss on my villa nail. Yeah. Um, a villa nail is, is, a, is a poetic poem. Some of you already know that. If you don't know the poem, you'll know what happened. It's a poem. Um, it's a, it, it has repeating lines. Uh, to me, it, it's reminiscent of the blues, the way blues lyrics out there. So what I did is I, I made this building on a kind of blues and I dedicated it to a musician by the name of James Blood Omer. Some of you know who that is. So this is Kiss My Blue Now. I make one reference to Sade Adu. And if you don't know who that is, <laughs> all right. Kiss my blue now. I'm older today than I was yesterday. And somehow I guess I just done lost the knack. I wish I could fix that. But what can I say? I trundle around with my feet made of clay. You'd think after a while, y'all might cut me some slack. I'm older today than I felt yesterday. If Sean had a do call, I'd go right away. I bet she keeps love in the black satin sack. I wish I could meet her, but what can I say? Don't look over here like I'm just in the way. Time was the fine girls kept me flat on my back. I'm older today than I did yesterday. I'm pegging the streets with my heart like a stray. And I'm home with the trees till the sweet earth hums back. Don't want to be lonesome, but what can I say? When I get the good cards, you just mess up my play. Would you kiss my behind if I sat on a tack? I'm bolder right now than I'll be in a day. How can I help but get carried away? When I was a boy, I got beaten with the strap. I try to forget that, but what can I say? It takes more than guts to go jump in the fray. I spit in the wind, and the wind spits right back. It's colder today than it was yesterday. I wish I could fix that. But what can I say? Uh, and I'll read you another of the memory poems. Um, this is a poem called Dolores Jets. And I'll just say briefly that everybody who has gone to high school knows that in every high school, there's some one or two people, for me and my friend, like girls, but that everybody knows where they are at all times <laughs> because they're so fine. And it was funny, I think about this now, but Dolores, her real name is Epps, but they made me put a J on it and they thought, oh, you shouldn't say it, but I don't know. Anyway, but Dolores, fellas, this is to the fellows. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we would just, you know, I'll just read the poem. <laughs> Dolores James. It seems insane now, but she'd be standing soaked in school day morning light, her loose leaf notebook flickering at the bus stop, and we almost trembled at the thought of her mouth filled for a moment with both of our short names. I don't know what we saw when we saw her face, but at 15 there's so much left to believe in that a girl with sunset in her eyes, with a kind smile and a bright blue miniskirt softly shading her bare thighs, really could be the guys. Even the gloss on her lips sighed. Kiss me, and you'll never do homework again. <laughs> Some Saturdays, my ace, Terry, would say, guess who was buying tea berry gum at the drugstore on Stanton? And I could see the sweet epiphany still stunning his eyes. And I knew that he knew that I knew, he knew, I knew. 
<laughs> Especially once summer had come and the sun stayed up till we had nothing else to do but wish and wonder about fine sisters and flimsy culottes and those hot pants James Brown screamed about. Crystal Berry, Diane Ramsey, Kim Graves, and her. This was around 1970. Vietnam to the left of us, black Muslims to the right, big Afros all over my Philadelphia. We had no idea where we were, how much history had come before us, how much cruelty, how much more dying was on the way. For me and Terry, it was a time when everything said, maybe. And maybe being blinded by the beauty of a 10th grader was proof that, for a little while, we were safe from the teeth that keep chewing up the world. I'd like to commend my parents for keeping calm, for not quitting their jobs or grabbing guns, and for never letting up about the amazing, quote, so many doors open to good students, unquote. I wish I had kissed Dolores Chaps. I wish I could have some small memory of her warm and spicy mouth to wrap these hungry words around. I would like to have danced with her, to have slow cooked to a slow song in her sleek, toffee arms, her body balanced between the temptation's five voices and me, a boy anointed with puberty. A kid with a B average and a cool best friend. I don't think I've ever understood how lonely I am, but I was closer to it at 15 because I didn't know anything. My heart, so near the surface of my skin, I could have moved it with my hand. Chumming the first bow from my throat, 
until my brain was a piano banged loud, hammered like that. It was like, I swear, her tongue was Saturn's seventh moon, hot like that, hot and cold and circling, circling, turning me into a glad planet, sun on one side, night pouring her slow hand over the other, one fire flying the kite of another, a kiss, I swear, if the great mother rushed open the moon like a gift and you were there to feel your shadow finally unhooked from your wrist, that'd be it. Even sweeter, like a riot of picnic priests on pogo sticks, up and up, this way and this, not falling, but on and on, like that, badly behaved, but holy, I swear, that kiss, both lips utterly committed to the world, like a peace call, like a free store, for, forever and always, a new city, no locks, no walls, just doors, like that, I swear, like that. in Jamaica, in Japan, in Lebanon, in New Zealand, in Ethiopia, Alaska, Arkansas, Waco, Texas, and in Czechoslovakia, there have been movers. She is the embodiment of the ancient and inevitable marriage between Europe and Africa. Her skin is ebony, her eyes are twilight blue, and time has given up trying to catch her. the sun's longest braids have touched the sea and her red hair streaks the sky. After the ocean slips his cool hand under the sand skirt of the beach, 
And the beach opens the beach, opens the beach. When a moon, thin and shy as a ten-year-old boy, plays over the rooftops and just into your eyes, they will begin to dance. And the night birds will say, Ooh-hoo, -oo, tomorrow, ooh -oo. The men will carry candles, the women will carry cloth, and in the trees, the cicadas will stop their maracas to listen. While Tale moves in like a storm, her huge blue eyes, her smooth black thighs, her belly lean and cool as a snake's. When Tale moves in, time steps back to let her pass, her skin too dark to cast shadow, her eyes too blue for the sky. She sings, the night is just an angel with a robe on. Death is not an ending, but a slow dance on the earth. God is not a person, but a music. To breathe is to kiss God on the mouth. And the people go, yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Between the stars, barefoot, cold in the sweet breath of birds, your eyes bright against that inner dark. The dancing will begin, and the people will sing with the chime of a wind drawn through the web of a spider, with the noise of a wind combed through the hair on the head of a moth. The movement begins with the night birds playing, Ooderoo, tomorrow, Ooderoo. With the river humming to itself like an old man tipsy with the moon. While Tale serves like a hawk, darker than the dreams of bats, blacker than the dark of caves, the huge blue eyes, the long hard thighs. While Tale moves, time sleeps on the corner like a drunk. Tale. Mother Twilight, sweet witch, her skin too smooth to be water, her lips too full to be moons. She says, the earth is just a woman with a skirt on. Death is not an ending, but a slow dance back to birth. Life is not a way, but a rhythm. To sing is to kiss God on the mouth. The people say, yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 